Moscow in 1887, the young Anton Chekhov attended the premiere of his first full-length play, Ivanov. It was a disaster. The cast improvised their lines and were even drunk on stage. The critics were hostile. But 110 years later, the production of Ivanov at the Almeida Theatre in London, with Ray Fiennes in the lead, proved such a triumph that the company were invited to take the play back to Moscow. Can they sustain their success, or will the ghosts of the first Ivanov come back to haunt them? Good morning, Almeida. I've got plenty of them. Sold out way back in January and Yeah. So I would... No, don't make a long journey from the country, it's not worth it. Some people slept overnight on the pavement. Some flew across the Atlantic in the hope of squeezing into the tiny theatre in a North London side street. Right, I'm going to the bar. This is going to be a very big day. The Rafe Fiennes factor had a lot to do with it. But the word had got around that all the cast were brilliant. This was an ensemble production, with everyone earning £200 a week, whether ingenue or movie star. No one can be sure whether the informal atmosphere created in the Almeida will be appropriate for a grand Russian theatre. It's in itself theatrically perverse that we are, we are taking a great Russian play, you know, which is, hasn't had the highest of reputations here, nor we believe in Russia, to the heart of Russia, you know, and he is their greatest playwright. I mean, that's, that's almost surreal, and that in itself is extremely exciting. You know, that, that sort of makes you feel that you're living, really. <laughs> there, are no, there are no preconditions, so we'll, we'll just see. This is the blind lady. How do you say He's got this list of words. He's got suitcase, bag, accordion. <laughs> In the later plays, Chekhov learnt to sort of coat everything with, with his great humanity. And, and it, somehow in this play, it's rougher. There, we move from high comedy to, um, to tragedy, to melodrama. But instead of segueing gently from one to the other, he just puts them next to each other. So, that, so it's like riding a bucking bronco or something. It's, it has a sort of... Um, that's what's exhilarating about it. You, you go from, from almost farce to, to, to tragedy like that. Well, it has a history for me because I played it before at RADA. Not very well. And in an older translation. So. For me, it's special because I'm coming back to something and having another go at it. David Hare's trod this extraordinary line of translation into a new play, still being faithful to, to the main... Well, it's very faithful to the Chekhov. And I think everyone feels it's special because somehow, you know, in a way, a new Chekhov's been discovered. Oh, well. Reef is on. The Almeida was built as a scientific lecture hall in the 19th century. Its cramped tattiness, without proper dressing rooms or even a backstage area, give Almeida Productions a special intimacy. The contact between public and performer is unusually intense. Ivanov waits for the audience to settle. Watch the steps. <laughs> this is the glamour of the theatre, you see. We won't have to do this in Moscow. Good one. See you on this 
Has it started or is yeah. it just gone quiet? Yeah. Has it started? Because the music is moving. I hate it. I don't think the music is moving. I hate it. Ivanov is a landowner who was once driven by the desire to change the world. But now he feels old and defeated at 35. Chekhov was in his 20s when he wrote Ivanov. He'd experienced depression, and his main character is crippled by the disease. Oh my God, what on earth are you doing? Mishnah, honestly, you know what my life's like. I know, I do know. Then why do you do? Why do you do all these right, things? All right, all right, I promise. get some sort of pleasure. I'll never shoot you again. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to read. It sometimes can be can be difficult for an audience to have an evening with Ivanov because there must be times when they want to say, for fuck's sake, cheer up, pull yourself together. But, of course, that's what people say to you when you're depressed, and that's what you say to yourself when you're depressed. And um, Chekhov absolutely puts his finger on that. I do have to ask you, please don't stop me. Don't stop me going out. I know it's selfish, but forgive me. I need this selfishness. It must be allowed. As soon as the sun goes down, my own home begins to oppress me. I become consumed with anguish. And why, if only I knew, I feel terrible here. I go to the Livia Devs, I feel worse. I come home, I feel worse still, and so it goes. I am desperate. Nicolai, why not stay? We'll talk, we'll talk, as we used to talk. Let's eat together and read. Now we call it clinical depression. You know, oh, that's what it is. Fine, we can deal with it, put it one side. But of course, clinical depression is only a name, you know, an approximation for, for so many things that are going on inside. And, and he's in a state of intellectual, moral, physical perhaps, certainly spiritual chaos. Uh, and so is the world that he's operating in. I was terrified of making the performance too big and, you know, I, I said, it seems ridiculous now, but I remember a day in rehearsals when I said to Jonathan, I don't want to just come on and be a funny turn. I mean, these are very much the comic characters, but they're a glimpse of the life going on around Ivanov. And if, if he lives amongst these people, you can see why he gets so depressed. I mean, they're so racist and petty-minded and obsessed with money. But they're all bored and desperate, you know. So I hope that it's not just a big performance and that she is showing off because she's at a party. And, uh, I mean, Jonathan wanted us to be totally committed in the moment, and you have to be brave to do that. But I do worry sometimes that, you know, especially when people say to me in the bar afterwards, what a brave performance, and I think, oh... Went over the top again. <laughs> oh, and no one may yawn in front of ladies. I'm sorry, I forgot myself. <laughs> Two dogs. Pass. 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 Lord Jesus, the tedium, it's as if one had actually died. I just think there's a cemetery, right, in, in, this, uh, in the, one of the convents where they're all buried, Chekhov and Stanislavski, all of them, Gogol. It says, the artistic roll call starts in plot two with a tragedy, for when historians examined the grave of Nikolai Gogol, they found claw marks inside the coffin, proving that he had been buried alive following a cataleptic fit. Ooh. Pretty creepy, mm hmm? And Chekhov and Stanislavski are buried side by side. And when you're back from Moscow, you won't need any of us. No. Over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. 
See you later, boys. Yes. They must be a patch of smiles. She's a patch of Yes, they're a patch of smiles. We can only hope they're waiting for you. Shuffle Scottish. Mrs. Patterson's in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's it then. She'll laugh. What a prima donna! What on earth do you think you're doing? I mean, yeah. These are your guests. You must mingle. Oh, God, what an unendurable life we do lead. You think so? Gavrilla, there's a little look who's here. Radiance, beauty, and laughter sitting among us. How are you, you gorgeous piece of nougat? Oh, happy to be here. Oh, and we are happy to have you. Happy, happy. So, very well, I could do with a vodka. Oh, good health, sir. Oh, health? Well, I'm alive. That's all one can say. Yes. Well, needless to say, he's already married. Oh, and one other small detail. Well, he's also gone off his head. Who can you mean? Yes, well, naturally, I am talking about Ivanov. A good man, but look at him. Desperately unhappy. Well, is it any surprise? Oh, uh... well. Well, it's his own fault. How could he? What an obvious disaster marrying a Jew. <laughs> and as usually, it doesn't pay off. All he wanted was to get his hands on little Sarah Abramson's fortune, but the parents were ahead of him. They cut her off the day she changed her religion. As soon as she changed her name, he should have foreseen it. Now the poor man's lumbered. Mother, that is simply not true. <laughs> well, my dear, I think one may say it is commonly accepted. Is it? It is fairly obvious. <laughs> Why else would anyone marry a Jew? <laughs> There aren't enough nice Russian girls. <laughs> <laughs> no, the sad thing is. Now, I respect Ivanov as much as you do. He's welcomed me into his home. <laughs> but you can hardly deny, through the whole region, the man is known as a scoundrel. Yes, right? he, and that's your idea of respect. Oh, I'm sorry, there's everything. We all know. In short, he's oh, yes. 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 true. Ivanov bought a herd of cows. This is nonsense. Yes, During the cattle epidemic, and then to make money, he infected them himself. The that's scheme what? was obviously Borkin's. Oh, no. He had Borkin oh, written all over it. When Ivanov found out, he was furious. I think she's a very Russian character. Um, I don't think there's anything English in her at all, which is something that I really struggled with. She's very strong, um, and she's very outspoken, and there's quite a kind of... Um, I've just finished reading Crime and Punishment, and one of the characters in that is very similar to her. Um, so I think to kind of locate her in that really helps. There's a whole Russian tradition of women who, who really believe... Um, in love and in the power of that, not as some kind of hippie-ish idea, but as this incredibly powerful emotion that can actually change people's lives. I love you, Nikolai Alexeyevich. I'll follow you anywhere, to the ends of the earth, wherever, to the grave. Only soon, only now, or else I'm going to die. I can't believe it, to hear those words. To start again? Is there hope again, Sasha? Is there happiness? Oh, my sweet youth. My sweet lost youth. <laughs> yes. We live again, yes? We start work again, yes? I think it's 
just wonderful and I'm completely wrong. I've never been able to see how to do it because um, it's always worried me that Ivana is just depressed all the way through. Uh, and it's always seemed to me that the society around him was rather caricature in the Russian. Um, and I have to say, I think David Hare's text is better than Chekhov's. But David Hare has seen things in that text that I couldn't see, and he's made the most wonderful play out of it. Um, it's absolutely astonishing production. And a most um, hideously plausible version of Russian 19th century rural society. I'm sure that's what it was like. That's what it was like. What a nightmare. All right. But will this English vision of an imagined Russia convince an audience in Moscow? To Moscow! Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Go on! <laughs> Not nearly cool enough. Oh, 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 ah, yeah. ah. There's lots more in there. <laughs> and some champagne. And thank you all very, very no, much. No, really. The roller coaster production is on the road. Soon the actors will discover whether their version of Russia is one the Russians can recognize. The Mali Theatre was built for the Tsars alongside the Bolshoi. This visit is cultural diplomacy in action, subsidized by the British Council and an American corporation. Say, where do you live? Где вы живете? Где вы живете? Живете. Живете. Где вы живете? Живете. Саша. В Москве. В Москве. В Москве. На причистинке. Fine's fever has spread to Moscow. The English patient is in town and a hundred journalists come to greet him. What is the most important success of the film in Russia after the premiere of the film will see a large number of viewers, or the success of the film addressed to a less number of people? Well, my, my sense of it is that the play is happening tonight. It's present. It's a piece of work that's alive. For me, the film of the English patient is finished, it's made, it's out there. I have no part in it anymore. But we, I'm part of, of an event that's happening in the present tonight, the next two nights. So, of course, the, the success, the immediate response to that is much more important to me than the, how the English patient is... is how does acting on stage compare to acting in films like The English Patient and Schindler's List? If I had to choose? Yes, yes. If I had to choose, I hope I would choose theatre. And why? Because it seems to me the truest form of acting. You're acting in a continuum of time, in, in the framework of a play or a performance or a happening, whatever you want to call it. And, and, the, the, and above all, it's the interaction with the audience, which is so strong, which, which is, I think, um, a way of, of provoking people's hearts and minds and spirits about the world they live in, about the human condition. There is nothing, I believe, so powerful as a, a successful a collaborative act of theatre between actors and audience. It is one of the most powerful forms we have. When the English Ivanov steps on stage, there is no one there to protect him, as the first Ivanov discovered more than a hundred years ago. The Mali is a very different theatre from the 300-seat Almeida. It's a thousand-seater, built to stage the plays of Gogol and Ostrovsky, and now the self-conscious protector of the Russian classic tradition. Yes, I know, it's true. I'm sure it's all my fault. You're right, but I'm confused. I'm what? I'm possessed. Is that right? Is that the right word? How do I put this? I lack strength. That's it. I lack the strength to lift myself up. The truth is, I've ceased to understand anyone, anything. Oh, if I could just win that lottery. A small way, not even a big one, the things I could do. The places I'd show you. I'd be off your hands and not be back in this house till Judgment Day. Where did you go first? Ah, Moscow. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
does a Russian play and takes it to Russia. It's more than just about getting ticks in the box for, or add marks out of ten for how you did it. It's much more than this, much more fundamentally about human human be groups linking up um, right. and right. celebrating their differences and things that they want to, to share. I, I like the way that theatre is taken very seriously, as if it's a, a, a necessity for life, you know, alongside food. And, and, I mean, there's, there's so much economic uh, difficulty around, but the theatres are functioning, and the life of the theatre is discussed, and, and I find that very exciting. Wait, 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 wait. Can you tell them not to do anything, please? Because we know what we're doing. I know it doesn't look as though we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. Why did you know that you should do it? Trust me. <laughs> For their first encounter with a Russian audience, the Almeida Company have encouraged theatre professionals and drama students to a special preview. Especially, that's that's everything. Thank you. <laughs> but with language as a barrier, and their play in alien surroundings the company begin to realize just how challenging this is going to be. fear is that their intimate production will be lost in the vast space of the Imperial Theatre. Three months of triumph in London could be followed by disenchantment in Moscow. I don't quite believe I'm doing the play tonight, but I am. It'll all be clear by midnight. return in spring, but not the joy. 
That's it, isn't it? Well, then, go. Pray for me, Anna. I can't stay. I can't. Then go! We're listening to on the tano, there's this kind of echo coming off. And <laughs> suddenly everyone's in this vast space, and we're used to being in a contained little theatre yeah. that's so comfortable and cosy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of coughing and... Russell, you know, you didn't feel... Yeah. Of course, why shouldn't they be maybe whispering to one another the meaning or whatever it is? Yeah. And so you felt you had to grab attention, right. which the whole point in London was you never had to grab attention. It was just there. Right. Greetings, young friend. Young? Yeah, come now. I suppose you're going to start claiming to be old. <laughs> I could hardly still hope to call myself young. Oh. Please, it's only a name that you're a widow, Papa. I know you're more attractive than any young girl. <laughs> what? I are you serving the tea without sweetening, Gabriella? Tea is nothing without jam. It's a, a gooseberry, perhaps? Oh, no. No, thank you. No gooseberry. Are you sure? Thanks, but no thanks all the same. <laughs> With less than half the audience understanding English, the actors feel they're struggling for attention. But the silent yet impressive presence of Sam Beasley as the servant Gavrila is warmly rewarded. Yeah. It's quite different when you're sort of doing things with that slight dramatic, right. lif you know, lifting yeah. it up a bit, you know, and it feels completely different. You begin to feel you're a different character, you know, yeah. because the character you were was so sort of at ease yeah. somehow. It spoils all your time. It's just if we can hide it, but it's, yeah. it's, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. Hey, love, more than I thought it was. I love you. 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 Are these extremes of melodrama and high comedy the way the Russians think Chekhov should be played? Hello! Good morning! Is that Nikolai home? Not yet. Oh, well then. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so busy. I can't tell you, I'm completely worn out. And where have you blown in from? I had a night at Barabanov's. Uh -huh. I've only just finished. Played the whole night. Right through the night. Lost every penny. Barbaros useless, I can't. I'll tell you. Well, uh, thanks, uh, but if it's all uh, the same to uh, you. I'll describe the situation so you really understand. I'm holding hot. Oh. <laughs> he plays a diamond. Oh, please. I play another heart, he plays another diamond. Well, inevitably, I don't have to tell you. I don't take a trick. Now. All right. We start playing four clubs. Oh. I have the ace, the queen, six others, ten, three of spades. Oh, I literally cannot endure this. Look, really, this is interesting. Go away! We don't want to know! It's textbook. I have the ace, the queen, six others, and suddenly disaster. If so, you don't it's... shut up, I will shoot! Ah, I see. <laughs> That's how things are going. Oh, well, that's how things are now. Suddenly, we're all living in Australia. <laughs> Live your own life, pursue your own interests, damn the other man, and no common culture. Yeah, all your stuff. It's also the same as we are in the States, so you're not. It is, so you don't have a sense of it. No, I, I tell you what, behind, behind that wall, waiting. The first night concludes with questions from the audience. The theatrical crowd, difficult to impress. I At some moments, I was struck by a very strong hysterical element in this performance. Is that your attitude to Chekhov's character, or is that your attitude to the Russians? I, I don't quite 
know exactly what you mean by hysterical, but, but uh, they are characters acting in extremis. Um, so it wasn't a, no, it's not about, it's about these specific people in this situation. I, I think one of the things we find difficult to understand is the inertia, melancholy, boredom, depression in the play and in some of Chekhov, and which our translator has often translated by more active words. So melancholy has often become anguish. Mm -hmm. And this is a sort of answer to both, that some of our hysteria may be because we can't sit back mm -hmm. on the boredom yeah. and melancholy. We don't trust it. We don't quite understand it. I want to just express my opinion. I am an actress and I've seen Ivana performed by many Russian actors, including Smoktonovsky, Leonov, and other famous actors. And I was, it was very interesting for me to come and see the British performance of this play. And there was the moment uh, when I completely forgot there was the language barrier, and I don't speak English. And I became so much involved with what was going on on stage that I completely forgot that uh, it was a performance from a foreign country. So there are some human values, some human uh, qualities that we can share together without knowing each other's language. Pilgrimage to Chekhov's estate enables the actors to put their anxieties behind them, to rebuild their confidence. They discover the army planting a cherry orchard. I am able to block out all this stuff and think of him living there. Food was made there, then he'd be called in to lunch. <laughs> I'm in the middle of Act Two. <laughs> This is the house where he wrote The Seagull. And you've been in The Seagull? Twice. <laughs> yeah. In Act Four, when Nina comes back, she hovers around the house and looks through the windows and doesn't dare come in. And I suddenly felt this exactly, you know, I'm looking through the window at this house and it's, it's a romantic thought, but it, I was feeling romantic. At the Moscow Arts Theatre, where most of Chekhov's great plays were first performed, the cast confront their Russian predecessors. Um, that's the three sisters, Marshall and three sisters. Really? Yes, I don't think they held back on no. that character. Mm -hmm. Their confidence might grow with each night of the run, but they're always in the shadow of the Russian tradition. You look for the bulbous nose that is constantly referred to, and, uh, and the squashed blueberry. Um, but black and white doesn't bring it out, but I suggest he hasn't gone for that too much. Very sober, sober-looking lemon. Mm -hmm. It is wonderful. There's a weight about him. I've always thought that you needed that weight. I think you need weight to play Пожилые люди, которые в этом спектакле участвуют, те, кто, те, вот актер Билл Паттерсон, который играл Лебедева, актеры, которые играли дядю Боркина, вот это трио, они создавали ту изумительную атмосферу этого спектакля, совершенно специфическую, которая делала это зрелище бесконечно радостным и интересным для меня. Но я бы сказал, что Весь остальной театральный язык, он как бы не, uh, не создавал контрапункта. Этот прекрасный актер, который играл главную роль, он был на уровне текста. Здесь я видел, в общем, довольно слабого психопатического uh, человечка, который мне не был особенно интересен. 
Once more you have turned my study into a tap room. Yeah. I have asked you a thousand times. Oh. Look, there's vodka all over my papers. There's, there's crumbs, gherkins, there's disgusting. Yeah, well, it's my fault entirely, and I apologize, but I have got serious things to discuss. Yeah, I was here first. I can't I can't wait. Wait. I got a lesson to everyone. Он с самого начала задавлен жизнью. Он с самого начала уже погружен в свои мысли. Он сгорблен, несмотря на то, что сам Файнс как бы совершенно нормально. Но и там же есть любовь, там есть увлеченность Сашей. И он не мог в этих сценах не распрямиться. Даже в любви он понимал с самого начала, что это все обречено. И это не имело развития. Паша? What's wrong with me? Good question. Uh, I've not wanted to ask. I thought... Though perhaps your troubles had got the better of you, but you are not that type. Normally you overcome misfortune, so it's something else. But I don't know what. Me neither. Although sometimes I think I... <laughs> well, no, no, it's not that. Oh, no, no. The nearest I can get. I used to have a workman. Semyon, he was called. Do you remember? At harvest time, he wanted to show off in front of the girls, so he loaded two sacks of rye at once. He strained his back, and he died soon after. That's how I feel, as if my back has been broken. I'm school, university, agriculture, village education. Civic projects. I mean, from the start, I was set on doing everything differently. And I married differently. I took more risks. I used my own money. I threw it away. I was happier and unhappier than anyone else in the region. But these things, were, they were like sacks. I loaded them on my back, and now it snapped. Сейчас половина земного шара. Больны, так сказать, вот этой в разных формах, проявлениях, болезнью, то, что называется депрессией. Это когда теряется вкус жизни, когда э, человек не, не видит смысла этой жизни. И вы понимаете, вот в те годы Чехов, конечно, именно это, так сказать, затронул в Иванове, и в основном в его, так сказать, фигуре, так сказать, сосредоточена, что ли, вся эта проблема. И эти попытки его выйти из этой депрессии, найти себя, найти опять вот этот смысл жизни. И Файнс это делает очень хорошо, прекрасно. Это он делает глубоко, разнообразно. И поэтому мне представляется, что это спектакль именно... Ну, в уровень всех остальных, так сказать, серьезных чеховских пьес. Вот так. What was she doing here? I need to know why did she come here? Don't ask. What was she doing here? I am profoundly guilty. Punish me any way you choose, but please don't ask any more. I've no strength to tell you. Oh, now I see. Now I begin to see you. At last I see the kind of person you are. A man without honor. No! You came to me and lied. I gave up my religion, my family. I even gave up my name. You talked to me about goodness and truth. You told me you loved me. 
But the words were dirt, and I believed every word. I have never lied to I you. I have lived here with you for five years. I have suffered and grown ill, but I did not stop loving you for one moment. You were my god, and all that time you have been deceiving Anna, me. Anna, accuse me of anything, but not of dishonesty. I have never once lied in my life. Accuse me of anything, but not of dishonesty. Everything now makes sense to me. You married me because you thought my parents would give in. No. You thought I'd inherit. Oh, my God, Anna, please, no, don't talk me. Now you have a French plan now. Everything is clear to me. I understand everything. You have never loved me. I've never been faithful. Never. And it is a lie. Say what you feel, but don't degrade me with lies. Look at that dishonest. You owe money to the other death, so now you're going to seduce his daughter. You want to trick her just as you trick me. That's the Please, truth. Anna, be quiet. I will not be quiet. I beg you, say nothing else. This anger is killing me. I am going to insult oh, you. Oh, I'm impeded in the sense you manipulated us all. You put schemes in Porkin's head and played the I beg you, be silent. I cannot stop myself. These words will burst out of me, you dirty Jew. I will never be silent. Never again. Not after what you've said to me. Not after what you've done. You told. refuse. You refuse to be silent in the name of now God. Go up and start swindling me a bit. You are going to die. I have spoken to the doctor. You are going to die very soon. When did he say that? Oh, my God. The evil. Mm. How evil I am. Серьезная попытка понять русского человека. Здесь, конечно, здесь э, режиссеры, актеры добивались определенной атмосферы, э, очень важной. Люди были немножко карикатурные, но все равно они были э, достойны. То есть видно было, что э, актеры и режиссер стараются играть русских людей, но из изнутри, изнутри. Вот и вот на этот взгляд мне кажется это победа, это победа. Я порадовался, я порадовался, что на нас сейчас э гости с английского с островов. Вот смотрят уже более мудрыми, более осмысленными глазами. response to the English Ivanov is mixed, but the ovation and flowers are more than a theatrical ritual. The energy and passion of the Almeida production has burst through to its Russian audience. The ghosts of the first Ivanov have been laid to rest. It's been an amazing adventure, an amazing adventure. It's, it's been three months and it's been a long, it's been an odyssey. And it's, this is the perfect ending. Oh, no, well, it's very moving to end up on the stage, obviously, in the Theatre of Moscow. I mean, it's fantastically moving because uh, the idea, I would have thought, considering what a terrible flop it was at the first performance, the idea that it's being performed, and most of all performed by an English company in Moscow, it's completely extraordinary. And Ivanov is no more um, appreciated here in Moscow than it is in England. It's not part of the repertory. 
So to see it played here in, and received the way it's been received is quite extraordinary. Я, к сожалению, вот не говорю по-английски. Да, очень, очень жалко. Да, я сегодня как-то с каким-то особым волнением смотрела, потому что я же сама много лет играла эту роль. Я была в этой атмосфере, я как бы заново окунулась в эту атмосферу, да. И очень такая молодец, и так трогательно, и глубоко проживает, и все так естественно. И у Чехова, как у Чехова, второй план. А для вас что было самое важное на счет, вот как вы играли Сашу? Сашу любить, любить. Это самое главное. Да. The actor. It's completely. Um, they understand the character completely because the character is completely Russian. Whereas the English, who are ironists and who refuse to admit that any bloody play is about them and always pretend that it's about other people, you know, have had a struggle with the character of Ivanov. And uh, that that. So it's wonderful to hear Rafe speak to the soul of the house. Without any, um, without any little bit of um, yes, this is very powerful, but it's not about me, which is what you get in England. You know? We're killed by irony. Yeah, and you can't talk about in, if you talk about the soul in England. You, everybody's toes go. Yeah. Embarrassing. Yeah. That's right. Here, yes. you know, they ask you questions in interviews about the soul. It's <laughs> completely not blast. No, wonderful. I find it's really emotional to talk about because it's, it's so strong, really. But it was very nice. Well, I tottered on, I got a rap and do it, so. Amazing. And then one man came up to me in the corridor and said, You're very good, you remind me of, of Tolstoy. Now that's stunning. Really. And where is your director who staged it? It's it, sitting there. Jonathan it's, it's you! It's you! Who <laughs> did such a wonderful thing? It's you, producer. Yeah, yeah. My dear, bring Shaker. Will I be I like it with him? You We're know, going to do Coriolanus and Richard II. Can, you know what? Uh, we saw Paul Scofield, yeah, you know, yeah. Peter Brook brought uh, Hamlet, King, King uh, Lear. Lear. You know, we love Shakespeare, do bring no. such a wonderful company. You can no. manage. I want to tell you, listen, if you were. Yeah. Oh wonder, how many goodly creatures are there here? How beautiful mankind is. Oh brave new world that has such people in it. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks, you. Thanks, you. Thanks you so much. And God bless you, God bless you. And Christ is risen. Tomorrow is our yes. Easter. Christ is risen. <laughs> yes, God bless you. Do come back. We'll be happy to see you again. Bye bye. Thank you.
Yeah.